Welcome back. Now the Senate will hold a test vote on the border deal and national security spending package today. Senate Republicans expected to block the bill. A group of GOP senators, including Texas's Ted Cruz, now blame Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell for the bill. Cruz is calling for McConnell to resign. Here's McConnell's response. I think we can all agree that Senator Cruz is not a fan. I followed the instructions of my conference who were insisting that we tackle this. Is it time for Mitch McConnell to go? I think it is. I asked President Trump about this, uh, and uh, his answer really surprised me. Let me bring in Indiana Senator Mike Braun, member of the Senate Budget mm -hmm. Committee. Senator, good to see you. Thanks very much for being here. Good I know there's on. no love lost between Mitch McConnell and Donald Trump, and yet when I said to Trump, how are you going to deal with working with the Senate? They're all anti-Trump, the leadership there. He goes, I think Mitch McConnell's about to endorse me. <laughs> Do you think Mitch McConnell well, should, should step down? So when it comes to all this, let me give you a little context, how we've gotten to where we are now. Rick Scott and I came in in 2018. We joined two or three others, Mike Lee, Ted Cruz, Rand Paul, where you'd actually have a little bit of critical mass. 20 and 22, we've added at least doubled that uh, contingent. So we now have critical mass here in the Senate. We can call conference meetings. You can say stuff like Ted just did. It wouldn't surprise me if McConnell would endorse Trump because he reads the tea leaves in the political marketplace. Look at that. And when you look at how we got here on this particular issue, this started in October. And the only reason we were talking about border is the rule of 41. We've never hung together with 41 senators to get around cloture filibuster until October of last year. Enough is enough. We're hearing it from our constituents. Now there are enough of us here. We got a thing called the Breakfast Club. That's uh, Ted Cruz, uh, Rick Scott, Ron Johnson, Mike Lee, and I. Occasionally Rand Paul shows up. We discuss these things we never did before, and we're gathering others to come with us. That's the change in dynamic. And here's how it's going to play out today. We're going to have a vote that's going to get rid of this border supplemental package and then immediately the Schumer bill on supplementals, which I think leadership and our party is going to be behind, is going to put up the uh, Ukraine, Taiwan and Israeli package aid. It took five months to get here. That was the thing they were most interested in in the first place. So what happens to the border? If you all agree to send money to Ukraine, and you all agree on this supplemental standalone package, the border, nothing gets done. Well, I don't think everybody's going to agree with the standalone package on the supplemental, but the border will have to be pushed through the House. H.R. 2 was the template. Okay. By the way, the legislative platform could be used currently because Trump did it and just was aggressive on not having open borders. Mm. Biden did the opposite. So they own it. And here's this tricky thing around here. Democrats are faster footed than we are generally. They'll try to blame us on not doing a border deal when that thing was littered with loopholes. Well, that's what they're doing already. They said it's Trump's fault and the MAGA Republicans. Yeah. Look, with all due respect to the Breakfast Club and the, the unity that you have been able to create here yeah. within the Senate leadership, you were not included in any of the details of this border bill, right? They dropped it in the dead of night, dead of night meaning Sunday night. Oklahoma Senator and Chief Border Deal Negotiator James Langford joined me on this program yesterday, and he tried to defend the bill, even though the bill gives more money to the NGOs who are basically uh, transporting the migrants across the country. Watch this. The money for the NGOs doesn't fully go out until we get more deportation flights so they implement the tougher standards. So that money is held until we actually get the full implementation of the other areas. So that, that's a leverage point for us. There's more, uh, there's more money for ICE, more money for Border Patrol. We actually build a system that can actually detain and deport individuals and to be able to turn them out of the country. So no way this is about letting 5,000 people a day like we've got some clicker counting people off at 5,000 and then we stop it. That's not what it is. It's not what it is, but that at the end of the day is what it would be. 5,000 plus people a day. Senator, look, your colleague tried his hardest to defend that deal. At the end of the day, he didn't even vote for it. No, and that this is all part of the process. This just took longer because finally individuals back home 
are holding folks accountable. And that's why I think we're in a better place now. We're building momentum. This thing was dead from the beginning because it was going to be too far off of HR2. But we are in a better place now, Maria, than we would have been years ago. But we're not there yet. And you've got to call all this out. That's being done more often than not. And on the supplemental, that's going to be there today. It'll be interesting to see how many in our own party will vote for that when every penny of that $100 billion, roughly, is going to be borrowed. We're not getting it out of an emergency fund. Everything we do here, when we do spend money, 100% of it borrowed on top of the $2 trillion uh, deficits we're running every year currently. Yeah, which sad, is what... Sad say. It's a great yeah. point that you're making because as you're talking about this, you've got two deadlines on the horizon, right? March 1st and March 8th, where you got to get the appropriations bills passed or you're going to be dealing with another continuing resolution and dealing with Nancy Pelosi spending again, which is what got the last guy fired. Your thoughts on whether or not you're going to make these appropriations bills deadlines? Because I, I've been questioning why the Senate thought it was smart or important to come up with this gargantuan new immigration policy, jam it in during an election year when the Republicans had one request, secure the border. That's it. Secure the border. And they couldn't do it. Couldn't do that. And then it's the same old, same old on these borrow and spend budgets. Maria, they don't mind backing you up to deadlines. That's when you get the 4,100-page bill dropped into your lap at 1.40 in the morning, two days to read it, and it plays in to the status quo. That's going to change as well. And one other salient point, the numbers never give up. The amount of interest we're going to be paying here in a year or two is going to equal what we spend on defense. That's right. Medicare trust fund goes broke. Social Security does. That's when things fall apart and you can't hide behind the bad behavior that's been coming from this place for decades. So what, what about those appropriations bills? March 1st is coming up. March 8th follows. Well, appropriations have actually had some regular order to it. Leadership isn't interested in that because it doesn't enable them to craft this stuff behind closed doors. That's why I gave up a spot on the appropriations. In the two years I was on it, we wouldn't meet at all. It would be two weeks before the deadline, and you didn't even know the top line. That's the part most people don't realize in terms of how this place works. So It'll fall apart in the long run, but that's the way it is currently. Senator, let me get your take on what happens now with uh, Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. So four Republicans blocked the deal. He survived the House impeachment vote because four Republicans voted against the impeachment. California Congressman Tom McClintock uh, defended his decision to vote against impeaching Mayorkas. And I want to get your take what happens with this next week. Here's the senator. Watch this. Secretary Mayorkas is guilty of maladministration of our immigration laws on a cosmic scale. But we know that's not grounds for impeachment because the American founders specifically rejected it. They didn't want political disputes to become impeachments. This border crisis can't be fixed by replacing one left-wing official with another. And, of course, that was Congressman McClintock. Your thoughts, Senator, in terms of whether or not this vote comes up again next week? Where do you think this goes? It sounds like he's coming from the angle of the other party, number one. But the reason this went down, normally they whip this stuff very closely, is there was a Democrat that actually ended up voting that was not supposed to. That's why they had to pull the maneuver at the end uh, in terms of changing a vote to wait for Scalise to come back. The die has been cast. No one is going to flip on a vote. You get Scalise back, I think the uh, impeachment proceedings on Mayorkas will go through. He has been the uh, guy that's been implementing all this stuff. Yeah. Biden has been the band leader. They are both liable. And the important thing is constituents across the spectrum, independents and even some Democrats, know that's the big issue. They're not going to slip out of this one for all the things we've been talking about. All right. We'll leave it there. Senator, it's always a pleasure to see you. Thanks very much, sir. You bet. Mike Braun in D.C. this morning. We'll be right back.